Hello everyone, welcome to the top 5 best builds of Bloodborne PvP. First, we're going to cover some build basics. These basics are important for every build in the showcase and build making in general. First, we have our primary runes. You will want boost max HP 15% and the boost max HP 10%. These are very important to have equipped for any proper build. Second, we have our secondary rune. This one's more up to personal preference. Personally, I favor the all damage reduction plus 5% or the fizz damage reduction plus 7% for extra survivability. However, if you feel it's necessary, you can also use the boost max stamina by plus 20%. Utility tools are one of the defining factors of what make these upcoming builds the best in the game. This is namely due to beast Roar, which can allow free heals off successful knockdowns, all these builds can also make use of minor tools due to meeting the requirements for Beast Roar, which is 15 Arcane. However, it is important to know over-reliance on this tool can make you predictable and sloppy without it, so it is best to learn how to heal with and without this very powerful utility tool. Now let us begin with our first build, the Vic Gouge Strength. In my opinion, this is the best build in the game, boasting 75 Vit, which gives you a lot of survivability, 50 Strength, which gives you access to heavy abyssals and powerful strength weapons such as the Axe, Saw Cleaver, Whirligig, and others. Of course, you also have 15 Arcane for Beast Roar, but this 15 Arcane will also grant you the HMS and the Wheel. You will see 15 Arc is a reoccurring theme as it is a small investment to gain Beast or other lesser tools and in most cases additional weapons like the Holy Moonlight and Wheel. After each build showcase I'll give alternative builds. For instance this is another example of the Vic Gaud Strength build. It's a waste of skin with 16 strength for the Bloodletter Mace, which is very powerful on a strength build when gemmed properly. I will leave a link in the description below for the stat simulator I used in this video. Now we move on to our next build, the Vic Gouge Arcane. If you thought the last build was tanky, think again. Here we have 82 Vit, which again gives this build a ton of survivability. And of course, 50 arc for our damage stat. On this build, we will be using Cold Abyssals, Arcane, and Elemental Gems. Along with the survivability, you have the ability to attack your opponent's defenses, choosing the element that their armor has the least resistance to. This build can also make use of all the Arcane Hunter tools and the Cost Parasite. The Cost Parasite is a wonderful addition to the Arcane build, as it has great stagger and combo potential. However, the Parasite is more stamina hungry than most weapons in Bloodborne. So here is a more optimized Vic Gouge Arcane stat placement for those who are interested in Parasite usage. Also, following this I will show more alternate stat placements for Arc Vic Gouge. Now on to my personal favorite best build, the Strength Quality. This build allows us to use heavy bezels and gives us access to a wide variety of weapons, only missing out on weapons with tinge requirements, high arc tools, and the cost parasite. This build has replaced the old meta 50 strength 50 skill builds, as it allows for high weapon AR, the addition of beast roar, lesser tools, the holy moonlight sword, and the wheel. This build has been deemed by many to be the better 50-50. Like before, I will be leaving some alternative builds. However, I don't have too much to say about them, as they are fairly even in effectiveness. I'll merely be showing these builds so you have some options to choose from.
now we move on to skill quality. Nearly as strong as the strength quality, if not close to even, this build has a wide arsenal like that of the strength quality. However, it specializes in weapons with great skill scaling. Really, in my opinion though, the only real reason you will choose this build over the strength quality is if you want to use weapons such as the Writer, Bowblade, Blade of Mercy, and Rikuyo. This is because the strength quality is generally the better option, due to the boosted damage from heavy abyssals. Of course, weapons like Rifle, Spear, Burial Blade, Dredicane, and Church Pick, and some others will still be quite effective on your skill quality. Also, this build requires less farming, and is quite easy to create, as you don't need to farm anything but 27% temperings. Just like the strength quality, I don't have too much to say about alternative build setups, as they are fairly even in terms of effectiveness. Now on to the final build in this showcase, the Writer Shield. Surprisingly, this build is much more effective than one might initially think. The shield on high endurance can block most weapons fairly well, and can even outright make some weapons very difficult to use. Some examples being the Chicago, Blades of Mercy, Rakuyo, Cost Parasite, Boomhammer, Bowblade, Beast Claws, and the Cane. The shield on this setup can even block Beast Roar, which can give you a unique opportunity to punish without spacing or iframing their Beast Roar. However, over reliance on the shield can get you into some trouble, as getting guard broken can get you punished pretty hard. Also, some weapons do rather high stamina damage and can make the shield use a bit difficult. Some good examples of this are the Burial Blade, Church Pick, the Whirligig, and the Holy Moonlight Sword. This build allows you to have a weapon, a parry tool, and a shield all at once, which can be very beneficial. You will mainly rely on the Rider and likely the Rifle Spear as a backup, but you also have the Bow Blade, Blades of Mercy, and Rakuyo as solid secondary options. The best part about this build is it's cheap to make as you only need 27% tempering gems. It has high visceral damage as you know you have 50 skill and 27% gems and you can you can block hits when needed which is a lot more useful than people realize. This concludes the top 5 Bloodborne PvP builds. Keep in mind these builds don't guarantee victory but can give you a nice edge in combat. I decided to make this video due to the fact there's a massive amount of outdated information and even misinformation out there regarding good builds. Though it's pretty late in the game's life for this, I decided I wanted to help curb the misinformation and outdated data. I hope you all find this very useful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. Take care, my friends. Mbasa.